Kilusu is an endorobo. Every year, when everything is in blossom, he leaves for the bush in search of honey. Under the leaves of a tree, he discovers a nest of wild bees thanks to his strange ally, the Okachoroi, a bird which since the beginning of time has guided the men to the honey, hence his name, the honey guide bird. Once the honey is gathered, Kilusu returns to his village in the heart of Maasai territory in the south of Kenya. The village, called Manyata, has about 20 huts forming a circle. All around the dwellings, there is a thorny hedge protecting the inhabitants and their cattle from predators. Kilusu joins his father, Mzegobi, in preparing the first beer of the season, using the honey harvest. It's a very important moment, since the honey plays a vital role in the life of the endorobo. The honey is especially nutritious and provides a very important food supplement for a people who eat only meat, blood, milk and cornmeal. The Endorobo also use the honey to trade with other villages for cattle. This beer is at the center of all the tribe's numerous ceremonies and festivals around which their lives revolve. For the children, the honey is the only sweet they know. At 87, Emzegobi is the legendary figure of the village. In spite of his age, he is in excellent condition. Having lived through all of the previous century's upheavals, he is the most respected of all the elders. <laughs> Women don't go into the forest. They look after the home and the children. They must also see to the maintenance of the manyata, built with a mixture of dried mud, twigs, and manure. In the hot sun, the manure loses its odor and becomes as hard as cement. It resists the rain and provides insulation against the heat. I see, I just na nani it's the month of May. Kilusu's first harvest marking the beginning of the honey season is the occasion for the council to meet in the company of Mzegobe and his sons. They discuss at length the best places for future harvests. Each village has its own areas, and it's very important to respect them, thus avoiding any conflict. And so, for the next two months, the men must go through the forest trying to gather as much honey as they can. The next day, Kilusu and Mzegobi leave the village for a few days in search of the precious nectar. <laughs> Kilusu's young nephew, Kiset, goes with them. the bush, Mzegobi and his son have brought their bows and arrows to protect them from wild animals. Ah. 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 
After a long walk, they call for their friend, the honey guide bird. Very quickly, the bird responds, and singing and flying from tree to tree, he encourages them to follow him. The men talk to the bird a lot. They make promises in return for his help. Friend, show us the way to the honey. I hope the white man will come soon. Then I will buy ornaments from him for you, and you will be the handsomest bird in the forest. The bird is grateful and waits patiently to lead the men to the bees. If Emze Gobi and his family go in the wrong direction, the bird will come back for them until they found the nest. Once he is sure he's accomplished his mission, the bird hides in silence. The Endorobo can now begin to gather the honey in the tree to which the bird has led them. Emze Gobi and Kilusu light torches to smoke out the bees and lessen their aggressiveness. The men are lucky since the tree contains two nests. While Kilusu tackles the high branches, Emze Gobi and Kisset gather the honey in the trunk. In spite of the smoke, the bees are still lively and fight to defend their nest. The men have to bear being stung often in order to gather the precious honeycombs. Kisset watches everything his elders do very carefully. Soon, it will be his turn to confront the wild bees. never empty a nest completely. They always leave a few honeycombs so that the bees can manufacture others. Once the gathering is over, 
they stuff the nest with leaves in order to indicate to other honey hunters that this nest has been harvested. After the men leave, the honey guide comes out of hiding as quickly as he disappeared. Actually, his cooperation with the men is not totally selfless. He can now eat what he likes best without fear of being stung. The beeswax and the larva that Mzegobi and Kilusu have left behind them on the ground. This time, the bird leads them to an abandoned burrow in which the bees have built their nest. Although sometimes the endorobo find nests high in the trees on their own, they still need their guide to discover those hidden in the ground. Of the 12 species of honey guide birds, the friend of the endorobo is the greatest, hence his name, Great Honey Guide. At night, Mzegobi and his sons decide to sleep in a covered area, sheltered from wild animals. Yeah. Yeah. They haven't brought any food with them, since part of the day's harvest makes an excellent meal. As he savors the honey, Mzegobi recounts his adventures to young Kisset. In the past, when I went into the forest with my grandfather, we would gather honey from up to ten nests in one day. The honey from just one tree would fill three or four sacks as big as rocks. Nowadays, we can only fill one small sack because everyone wants the honey. There are fewer nests with less and less honey. <laughs> We'll have to get up early tomorrow if we want to find a spot with lots of honey. The next day, the endorobos discover a new nest without the guide's help. Afterwards, they leave the usual traces of the harvest at the foot of the tree. However, no bird will come to eat them, since the birds are unaware that the honey has been gathered. The territory of Mzegobe and his family covers part of the Masai Mara Reserve. 
Located near the Mara River, this region is the number one tourist attraction in Kenya. This sanctuary for wild animals is considered to be one of the most beautiful places in the world. Kilusu and his father show kiss at the plain where their village is located. On the other side is Tanzania and its renowned Serengeti National Park. The search for honey continues. The men call upon another honey guide bird for another nest. Although the honey guide bird is their friend, the endorobo don't trust him completely. He's very clever, and when pushed by hunger, he can play nasty tricks on them. Emzegobi recalls how he can sometimes guide the men to very dangerous animals such as the wild buffalo. The bird hopes that the hunter will be killed so that he can come back later and eat the worms which will attack the decomposing body. Fortunately for the time being, the bird guide is on their side. He leads them to a nest in the ground, well hidden behind some thick underbrush. Without knowing why, the endorobo have noticed that the bees which make their nest in the ground are less aggressive than those living in the trees. Kisset can therefore take his turn at gathering the honey. He nevertheless has to be very careful and listen to advice. In spite of everything, Kisset is still stung. His uncle reassures the youngster and jokes about it having happened to him very often. Kilusu takes over. The nest seems to be very crowded. The bee sting has caused Kisset's hand to swell. One day, he too will have tough skin. The harvest is excellent. The clear-colored combs are filled with honey. The dark yellow shelves, however, contain primarily larva. Before returning to Mayata, the endorobo enjoy a true feast. This mixture of wax and larva, which the men spit out, will provide a feast for the honey guide bird. The honey itself doesn't interest him. To the men, the honey. To the bird, the wax and larva. A perfect example of cooperation between man and animal. 
Meanwhile, in the village, the women make pearl ornaments for themselves or to sell to tourists at the reserve's luxurious lodges. They must work quickly since the tourist season comes right after the honey season. It's another source of abundance, although less poetic. <laughs> Kilusu and his family have collected a large quantity of honey, enough to exchange part of it with their Maasai cousins for two of their sheep. <laughs> Originally nomadic hunters and food gatherers, the Endorobo gradually became sedentary and blended with the Maasai and, like them, became breeders. Kilusu is happy to be able to replenish a small part of his herd, which was largely decimated by the terrible drought of the past few years. He can also keep enough honey for the wedding and circumcision ceremonies in December. In front of his hut, Emze Gobi celebrates his success with the village elders. They drink the beer that has been fermenting for a long period of time and which is now ready to be consumed. This first beer of the season is the best they've had for a long time. It marks the end of three hard years without rain, flowers or honey. Three years of wandering in search of the last remaining pastures for the last surviving animals. Today, however, Mzegobi is happy. The beer is delicious, and the numerous honeycombs they've gathered make him want to laugh and sing. Little by little, joy permeates the village. The young warriors, the Moran, do their traditional dances. Happy and light-hearted, the Endorobo drink to their faithful friend, the honey guide bird. Thanks to him, the honey season promises to be abundant.